Welcome to Direct U.S. Immigration's channel, where you get direct access to our most up-to-date immigration and global mobility space. My name is Matreya Brown, and I'm going to talk about a non-immigrant temporary work visa for foreign nationals coming to the U.S. to be employed as religious workers. So ministers, priests, educators, translators, missionaries, and other religious workers may qualify for this visa. You're not going to want to miss out on this one. Stay So the R1 visa allows people to come to the U.S. to develop their religious vocation, religious occupation, or ministry. These categories come with specific criteria that must be fulfilled. So for example, those pursuing a religious vocation may be nuns, monks, or others undertaking a lifetime vow. Those seeking religious occupations must be those performing religious duties that deal with traditional religious functions and relate to the faith on a fundamental level. Those entering as a minister must be trained members of the clergy, work as a minister, and perform ministerial duties. So the religious denomination and organization must be a bona fide group and direct U.S. immigration can help you determine whether your organization counts towards this requirement. Now there are four main benefits of the R visa. So first, you can bring your immediate family members. So your spouse and your children uh, under R2 status, however, they cannot work in the U.S. Um, of course, second reason is that you can live in the United States. So you can extend your stay into the United States for up to five years. And you, third is that you can work in a religious organization as a non-professional. So this means that there's no degree requirement for those pursuing religious occupations and that their job must include traditional religious functions. And finally, uh, it is a dual intent visa. So this means that you can apply for the green card uh, if you so choose. Now there are various requirements uh, for those who want to apply for the R1 visa, and this is because there are various religions in the world, but not all of them are widespread and established in the U.S. And because of that, there are requirements both for the person applying for the R1 visa, as well as the organization that hires the applicant. Now the person applying for the R1 visa must fulfill the following conditions. First is that uh, they be a member of the religion for the past two years. Second is that the religion must have a nonprofit organization in the U.S. and the individual must find a nonprofit religious organization or an organization affiliated with the religion. The applicant must be a minister or a person working directly in the religious occupation. Uh, the applicant must commit to working at least 20 hours per week and the applicant must not work in any other position except for their religious capacity. As for the nonprofit organization, it must either be one of the registered organizations in the U.S. So either a nonprofit religious organization with its own uh, IRS letter of the 501c3, a nonprofit religious organization with a group tax exemption, a, or a nonprofit organization affiliated with a religion that has tax exemptions under 501c3 rules or other IRS codes that do not make it a religion, uh, a religious organization by definition. Now the application can uh, begin if the organization hires the person to fulfill the criteria. Um, however, since there are so many religions in the world, the U.S. institution, uh, U.S. institutions have seen it fit to define what it means to be a religious practice and to be eligible to apply for the R1 visa. For immigration standards, a religion or a religious denomination is formed by a community of people who believe and are governed by the rules of ecclesiastical government. They also have these general characteristics. So they worship similarly, they have a shared faith amongst their members, they perform similar rituals, services, and ceremonies, uh, they have a shared code of, of discipline and doctrine, uh, they have religious organizations, and they have a shared space of worship. The R1 visa process begins in the U.S. with the employer filing form I-129. And to receive an R1 visa at a U.S. Embassy or Consulate, there needs to be an approval of that I-129 by USCIS. Now, the following evidence may need to be included with your petition. 
And this can include a letter of support, a job description and duty chart with the percentage of time uh, for certain duties broken down, so the amount of time per duty, um, a current and valid determ determination letter from the IRS showing that the organization is in fact tax exempt, uh, proof of compensation. Now, self-support will only be considered for certain uh, non-immigrant missionaries. Um, and then, of course, evidence of funding for compensation. Uh, so basically, the organization needs to demonstrate how the position will be compensated. And this can be shown through records, budgets, um, and, and so forth. Uh, also documentation that confirms the religious nature and purpose of the organization uh, and such evidence can include books, brochures, flyers, and other religious literature. Now if the religious worker is self-supporting, then the following evidence may also need to be provided. So this can include proof that the position is part of an established international missionary program sponsored by the denomination past R1 recipients, proof that the missionary workers are traditionally uncompensated, uh, proof of formal training for missionaries, proof that such missionary work is part of religious development in this denomination, uh, description of duties and responsibilities, and uh, of course the religious workers' bank records and other financial documentation that does demonstrate sources of support. The consulate or embassy will determine whether the beneficiary is eligible to receive the R1 visa. However, the CBP officer, so the Customs and Border Patrol uh, officer, will still have the ultimate authority to determine whether they will allow that beneficiary into the country. Now, with regard to duration of stay or you know validity of that visa, typically R1 holders can apply for an extension of status or a readmission under the R1 status for up to 30 months as long as their stay is not more than five than that five-year maximum. And after the extension is granted, the R2 dependents must also file Form I-539 to you know, extend their, their status. Now, to be eligible to return to the U.S., after spending the full five years inside of the U.S., the R1 worker must spend a total of one year outside of the U.S prior to uh, requesting to re-enter in that R1 status. Now, as always, there are always exceptions in immigration. So the exceptions do apply to R1 holders who do not live in the United States continually. Uh, they've lived abroad uh, and commuted to the US or whose work was seasonal, intermittent, or less than six months per year. And this proof needs to be presented uh, of these conditions uh, by way of arrival uh, departure records, uh, records of employment abroad, and tax returns. Now, as I had previously discussed, this R1 visa is a dual intent visa. So an individual can pursue other non-immigrant visa options such as the H1B, F1, or you know, employment-based immigrant categories, so the green card in either the EB2 or EB3 categories. So therefore, it is in fact possible to change your classification without having issue of intent. So to conclude, the R1 visa is, an, is excellent for those seeking to perform religious vocations or occupations. And religious workers who may not qualify for employment under other types of visa categories may find that the R1 is suitable for them. Now, if you have any questions on any of the information discussed in this guide, please feel free to email us directly at inquiry at directusimmigration.com. And I hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe if this content helps you in any way. Comment below if you want me to talk about something in specific and share this resource because you never know who needs answers to these questions. I'll see you in the next video.